You know, as you live, some people think that good things just happen because it's just life. I think our children's church has a children class today. But, you know, I, I feel God has a hand in everything. And He's good to His people, them that love Him, that seek after Him. He takes care of us. And I'm so thankful He does. And I like to say today, it's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord today. i got microphones everywhere up here. Praise the Lord. And, uh, but I, it is good to have everybody in God's house. But I was thinking as everybody was getting uh, collectively coming in today, we had some come at 10, some come at 11. But I begin to watch us as we know each other. It seems like some of you begin to reminisce of 10, 15 years, 20 years ago. And you look at each other and you say, Man, I didn't even recognize you. You, whoa, look at you. And it's amazing how when we get together, how we look at each other and, and we remember things. You know, one of the things that I remember the most of people that I see after years is the services we had together. The worshiping we had together. The praising we had together. The, the God saved me and filled me with the Holy Ghost. You see, those kind of days you just cannot forget. And it's good to see everybody in the house. Lord, thank you for coming and helping us celebrate today. What is today? What's, what is special about today? One of the biggest things today is for here at the Carville Pentecostal Church is we understand and we really pushed. This is the last Sunday of 2014. We'll never have another Sunday in 2014. And I have to say, uh, there's been some Sundays that I didn't really feel like going to church. But I, there, there was a, I didn't miss a Sunday. But it's some Sundays I didn't feel like going, but I pushed myself anyway. And I'm think, when I look back now, I'm thankful for every Sunday that I was here. But I want to go out this year saying I worship God in the last Sunday of 2014 today. Amen. And we thank you for coming today and helping us worship the Lord today. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25. And again, it's good to have all of our visitors. I hope you signed our, our little guest iPad that we got going around here the building. And I hope you can, uh, if you didn't, please uh, see one of our ushers and they'll get it for you today. i got to build my prop while you're turning to Matthew chapter 25 today. And as I begin to build my prop, you probably know already know my sermon today. Amen. Those of you who have been in church for a while, you probably know where I'm going. And I'm going to try to be real careful with these because one of these, the church borrowed, and I don't know which one we borrowed, so I don't want to break it today. And uh, right now, some of you are thinking, boy, I hope he don't drop my, my lantern. Praise the Lord. But today, I want to preach from Matthew 25, and it's going to be talking about the kingdom, what the kingdom is like in uh, 25.1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto a virgin which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And the wise took oil with their vessels, with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered. Everybody say, they all? They all, they all slumbered, the Bible says, and slept. And at midnight, they were cry, the cry was made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those uh, virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the, the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered and said, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that and sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they, were that, and they that were ready went in with him and to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came to the another virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Would you lay your Bibles down behind you today and let's lift your hands and help me pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity as always to preach your word. God, I come to your pulpit humble today. Lord, this is not my pulpit. This is not my church. God, this is your pulpit. This is your church. And I pray that you take your word today and I pray that you anoint your word. God, that your word is anointed, but anoint me to carry your word today. And I pray you anoint every heart to receive what you have today in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I do want you to hang around today for a little while before I get into my message. And I want to tell you, we're going to have some good barbecue to eat here in a little while. And we want you to stay around and enjoy that with us. But before I preach today, how many here has brought uh, 10 visitors with you? Do you think you've got 10 visitors? Would you raise your hand? Do I have anybody that might have brought 10 visitors today? Or how about 8 visitors? Anybody here bring 8 visitors? All right, how about 7 visitors? We're going to get somewhere here in a minute. Praise the Lord. Somebody had to, had to bring six visitors. Anybody here got six visitors today? Anybody? 
Brother Patton said he has. Brother Billy Patton, I want to give you a reward today for bringing six, six people. And you can do what you want to this. But we're having our bread reading starting in January this year. We do have another case of these. If anybody wants to buy them, they're ten bucks. You have an Old Testament and New Testament scripture at the same time. And also a proverb to read every day. And at the end of the year, you will be done reading the Bible. So if anybody wants one. But uh, Brother Patton wins one today. And if you'll get this for him, brother, appreciate you. Let's give Brother Patton a hand for his visions. Thank you. But you make sure you see me right after church if you want to buy one of those because they go pretty quick. I'm excited the people. I'm going to change the mics if I could, sound man, if I can find those back. And now we will uh, go from here. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Turn me up. I want to hurt their eardrums. Praise the Lord. There you go. Praise the Lord. But today I want to just preach a little while, if I can, from the text that we're at. And I'm going to title this, Just the Last Sunday. And today, uh, as we're theming this, I believe I have a life-changing thought that I probably could, and I want to inject or, or, or tell you into your life today. And I hope that you understand where I'm coming from. But what would you do today if this were your last Sunday? I wonder how full churches all across America would be if they knew for sure this is the last Sunday. I wonder how many appointments would have been changed, how many lives uh, would, you know, chaos would be happening today because people were wanting to get to the house of God. We often think, I believe, uh, and we, we put it in our mind about, about the coming of the end of life, and, and life is, is, is we, we feel, we think is closer for some of us than others because we think and we look at it is how old we are and and we really look at it about uh how our health is and we think that's how we judge lives but when you really think and i don't think we think like we should but but friend uh life is a vapor for all of us it appears for a little while then it's gone but when you think of it uh we usually think of friends and relatives that's you know that's older than us and they're, they're the ones that's going to go out of this earth before us but i'm going to tell you this could be all of our last sunday today this could be it today. Have you really thought, did you wake up today and think, you know, this could be my last Sunday that I'm going to worship God. This could be my last Sunday that I'm going to be able to get a hold of God. Did you really think, probably not most of us, we probably didn't think of that, but Jesus reminds us in this parable that none of us know the day nor the hour when the Lord is coming and or even our demise. We don't know when that will happen in our lives. And in verse 10, it was a powerful statement. He said in verse 10 of our text, he said, and the door was shut. There was a finality that took place uh, here and the door was shut. Call it what you want. You can call it uh, the passing of life or, or whatever you want, but there was a finality there. There was a final day. And I'm going to tell the church something today. I'm not a, a preacher that tries to scare people to the altar because I think that lasts about a month or two. Then you're back into your world. So I don't want to scare you to the altar today, but I want to tell the church today there's coming a final day for all of us. Everyone here, unless we get carried away with rapture, but that's going to be the final day that we have to deal with this earth. And at that time, there's nothing that can be done anymore at that last day, that final day. We can't ask for God to forgive us anymore. Uh, there's no such thing as uh, deathbed repentance. I'm just going to preach that today, and, and some of you are getting mad at me right now, but I'm going to tell you, we have the opportunity right now while I'm preaching to you to say, God, I'm sorry. We have the opportunity to get in the warm baptistry water today. And it's warm. If you don't believe it, ask Xander today when you see him. He was here Friday night. We baptized him in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and he, got, he said, I didn't want to get out. It was so warm. So I'm, I'm, I'm like the apostles. Hey, the water's warm and here's the water. What doeth hinder thee today? We have a robe. We have a towel. My friend, what hindereth thee today? I'm here to tell the church today, we have got to be ready. But at that moment, the last day, the final day, the last breath we draw, we can't run back and ask God to forgive us. Nothing can be done anymore. Why is that, Brother Hunt? Because the door will be shut. And in this message here today, in our text, this parable is, uh, I'm going to tell you, this parable was not for those pretty much that's not here today. Those non-churchgoers, this is not what the message was for. This message was for the church. Because as I said, they all slumbered and they all slept. They all were virgins. They all had lamps. They all had the part. They all looked like church folks. They all had uh, uh, the holiness down pat. They all had it all together. You know it. They all were church folks. All of them. Everybody say all of them. All of them. 
all 10 of them, five of them went out, five of them went in, five of them had no oil, five of them had oil when they needed it. It's important to have oil at, when it gets dark. You better write that in your Bible somewhere. It's important to have oil when it gets dark. Because there's going to come some dark days in your life. And if you don't have oil, you're not going to be able to see very far. You better have some oil ready. The all, all of them had lamps. They were all waiting for the bridegroom. They all rose and trimmed their lamps. Just like every Sunday, we all come to church. We all get our church clothes on. We all get in our car. And we all come to the same building and we worship God. But then there came, a, if you want to say, an embarkment. It says that the foolish was there and also the wise were there and I'm sure today when if, we, if I would break up this congregation today and I go in between every group and I talk to you guys and each and every individually most of you would say I have a lamp I have my life into where it should be I have a good thing in my life I have a lamp and, and all of us would today and all of you would probably tell you tell me I'm waiting on the bridegroom but the question is that really concerns me today however is do you have all in your lamp is your lamp ready? Do you have the right kind of oil? Are you, are you full of Jesus Christ, the oil representing the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost? Uh, are you ready if Jesus should come today? If the eastern sky split open today, could you look at your wife and say, I've been the husband that led you? Or could you look at your wife uh, or your husband and say, uh, I am the a woman of God. I love God. I'm ready to go. Uh, church, I don't know about you, but the the worst thing that would break my heart is if I had to leave this world and leave my children behind. I want to know that our family is ready to go. Amen. This is a burden this morning in my heart, and I'm concerned because I see Christians today, uh, and Christian, not only Christians, but also leaders, they're, they're compromising the gospel. They're compromising the gospel to fill their pews up. Uh, believe it or not, I've had people come to me and say, if you wouldn't be so hard, you might fill your church up. Church, I want to get you to heaven. I want to get you to heaven. My main concern today is get you to heaven. I'd rather take 10 to heaven than have 10,000 sitting on a pew lost going to hell. Come on, somebody. Uh, there's a heaven coming. Oh, how sweet the heaven's going to be. Uh, but there's also a hell coming. Uh, and I'm telling the bridegroom's getting ready to come. Uh, we better be ready when he gets ready for the people today. We better be ready today. Scriptures allow us. And I, I, I've seen it, the compromising of scriptures, people coming, and, and they're compromising this, compromising it. They're allowing all kinds of sin in their churches. And let me say this, they're also allowing sin to step in their pulpits. They're allowing sin to be in their choir just so they can have a big mass choir. Church, we will have a mass choir in a few days shortly. Amen. But guess what? It's going to be a godly choir. It's going to be a choir that loves God. It's going to be people that love to worship God. One of the, one of the things you've got to be is a worshiper to be in the choir. Come on, somebody. We're here to worship God and Him only today. Oh, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost in this place today. Hallelujah. It's found in 2 Timothy 3 and 13. It says, but evil men and seducers shall whack worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Is it not happening as we talk today? People are being deceived. If you think about it, well, uh, most of people and a lot of people are in their comfort zone today. They, they are, they're church goers. They have the lamp. They, they even, like I said a moment ago, they like the part. They know the part. There they're are expert Pentecostals, if you would, today. They're, they're these that, that know how to be a Pentecostal without never picking up their Bible. We know how to look the part. We know how to sing the songs. We know how to play the music. Uh, we know what to do. But church, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter how well your talent is. It doesn't matter how much you can sing and how good you can sing. Uh, it doesn't matter how many weeks, uh, a days a week that you preach. Uh, if you do not have oil in your lamp, uh, when the bridegrooms come, you're not going to go with him. We better be ready at all times. Amen. I want you to know there's a such thing, I believe, as a spiritual realm. And I believe we need to get to a, a better spiritual a realm in our life. Uh, we, need, we need to be constantly looking, I believe, how much oil we got. Just like you do, well, I, I would say probably 90% of women don't do this. But just like us men do, we're always looking at the gas gauge on the car. I know my wife doesn't look because every time I get in her car, it's on empty. You know? and, and on the way out to the car, I'm going to the car to get in. She'll say, oh, honey, the bell's done ding three times. Make sure you get some gas. But, but I believe as us today, we need to constantly look at our lives. Where is my level of oil? A am I out of oil? 
Church, I'm going to just tell you today, I believe there's some here today, you may have been in this way for 50 years. And bless your heart, I'm so glad you left uh, some great things for us. You've taught us. You, you showed us. Uh, but friend, let me ask you today, is your oil cup uh, still full? Is your lamp still ready to burn? Um, is it ready to light up? Uh, it doesn't matter who we are today. Uh, whether if you're a prestige of old time Pentecost uh, or you just was born Friday night in the Holy Ghost, uh, it doesn't matter. The thing we got to have uh, is our cup filled full full of all today because I'm going to tell you why the door is going to be shut one day there's going to be a last Sunday there is going to be a last Sunday I never when I was preparing this this uh, message today I began to think about one time I preached a message and at the end of my message I I told somebody in the Holy Ghost I said this could be your last Sunday as many times as preachers do that not knowing that the guy that worked me 24 25 years old sitting on the third pew in our church when we was at the uh, on 72 highway he looked uh, and he would not come to the altar I was begging I was said please come this could be your last Sunday uh, not knowing Knowing that Monday morning he was going to wreck my work truck uh, and that would have been his last Sunday. Church, I don't want to scare you today, but I want us to see reality today. Life is a vapor. You and I are going to pass unless God comes back in rapture. This could be our last Sunday. Peter even talks about the adversary. Peter said he goes about like a roaring lion. He's seeking whom he may devour. And church, I'm going to tell you that, that... that is why my message is asking us today, do you realize this could be our last Sunday? It could be. None of us is beyond the potential of, of falling into the devil's trap in this world system. We always look around at people that have fallen in, in the devil's trap and, and we just shake our head. But I'm going to tell you, none of you today are exempt from falling in the devil's trap. Every one of us can fall in the devil's trap. And a lot of times you fall in his trap at night when there's no oil. Because, you know, that's when sin comes in our lives is at dark time. You know, I tell my boys when we was growing up, I says, you got to be home when you're, when you're 16. you got to be home at 10 o'clock. No exceptions or you're going to be grounded. You're going to be in trouble. Your phones are taken away. Your car keys are taken away. Everything. you got to be home at 10 o'clock. Brother Hunt, that's bad. That's too early. Well, they got to be 17. I said, you got to be home at 11. And 18 until you move out. You better not be past midnight getting home. That's strict, ain't it? Well, that's bad, ain't it? Uh, but you know what's going on after midnight? Nothing but trouble. That's right, trouble. That's why it's, it's trouble at night. There's dark days. Uh, church, I'm here to tell you this world system, it has a system. This world has. And it's, it's coming in and it's taking our young people out of the church. We used to be able to preach when I was younger minister. I would preach hard at our young people. And I would say, get right. Get right, young people. Don't, don't walk away from God tonight. Uh, but church, now we have to preach to all ages. Uh, all ages are walking out of the church. Uh, all ages are letting their, their lamps run out of oil. Uh, we got, I got to preach to you today. Uh, this parable warns us that Jesus left behind. And it warns us to be ready. It's not only important, I believe, to have the lamp it's not only important, to, to, but it's also important to keep it burning. It's absolutely important to keep it burning. The bridegroom, it, it, when, he, when he arrives, it's important to have it burning in your life. Since the hour of original deception from Eve and Adam and Eve came into the garden, the deception came in their lives. Uh, the heart of man has been infected ever since uh, with this thing called deceit. It's coming against the Americans every day. It's coming against the world every day. Uh, we can see it even inside the church. On the outside, we see everything's all right. But on the inside, we, we, we hide our true selves because we don't want anybody to know our true life. So we don't know anybody to know what's really going on in behind uh, the walls of our houses or our homes or our workplaces. We wear our Christian mask and we put on it and, and we look so good. And everybody says, how are you doing? Everything's well. I'm good. Everything's good. Um, but the whole time, we're deceiving people that are around us because uh, we want everybody to think well of us. We want everybody to say they got it together. I mean, you never see him down. Uh, you never see him out. Uh, church, we put on this mask. Uh, if God were to come in today uh, and he was, he was able to rip that curtain uh, out in front of us that's got us hid, uh, I wonder what we really would see today. Would we be ashamed what the world has put in this deception that we have let expose in our lives. Uh, Jesus, if you look at Matthew chapter tw uh, 7 later and Matthew 24 later, Jesus Christ himself, he ranked deceit right up there with fornication and murder. 
Go ahead and write it down. He put it right up there. You see, we, we look at fornication and adultery and murder. We look at all those are bad, and they are bad. If you're doing them today, you need to make things right, get your heart right with God, and do what's right. Uh, but, friend, if you've been deceived today, that's right up there with those three today. Jesus put them up there himself because even the very elect could be astrayed. Therefore, we must keep the fires burning. We cannot let our, our lamp run out of oil today. We must keep this relationship with Jesus. We've got to keep it aflame. We've got to keep it going. We can't let the world system take that light that was placed in our lives, in this spiritual, uh, uh, in our lives when we first received the Holy Ghost. And we can't let it burn out, church. We can't let it burn out. My heart stirred in the subject because I, I realized today that it's not, it, it is, it's not only possible for the nation to be, con, to the, for their conscience to be seared, but it's also possible for the church's conscience to be seared. It's scaring me today, church, because of how we, and I'm going to talk about me today, of how we can sit in a Holy Ghost fire burning service and never be moved. It's scaring me today, church, how we can go to a concert that maybe don't have the right kind of music going on or we got a good beat music going on. We can be up hollering at ball games and we can scream at the basketball games and shoot these hoots, but we come to church, we can sit through a service and never be moved. Why? Because if we're not careful, even our minds can be seared today. That's why I asked the question today, what would you do today if this were truly your last Sunday? I have three things before I get done today that I want you to, uh, that I believe you would do. And I believe we ought to know today. Number one is I believe everyone here, if you, if you knew for sure this is your last Sunday, you would bring your experience with God up to date. Hey Amen. Just like a cell phone, you know, after about three or four months, you're looking for the new one to come out. You know, some of you are like me. You're, you're the old school. You say, well, mine still works good. Why do I want to update it? But, but people that's younger than me, they want to keep the latest phone. Church, I'm here to tell you it's very important to keep our souls updated. It's very important. This can't be just an Easter and Christmas and a, and a Mother's Day service that we can have and get our oil full. Son, my brothers and sisters, we got to have it every week. we got to have a relationship with God every time we turn around. Amen. Every time. If there's anyone who hears this message today or this morning, you don't, and listen to me, you, you don't bring things up to date. What's going to happen? I'm going to be honest with you. If you're not bringing your walk with God up to date, you're going to fit in with the five foolish. You say, you shouldn't call me a fool, Brother Hunt. I didn't. The Word did. If we don't bring it up to date, there were five virgins who were ready and five who were foolish. There are some of you who today, right now, you're ready to go. You're ready. If Jesus shall come today, can I see your hand if you're ready to go? Oh, God, I got some praying to do today. Jesus, I can see it happen. Let's try that again. If Jesus comes today, how many would be ready? That's better. Thank you. Oh, you had me worried for a minute. But you know, there are some today that really are not ready. Probably your neighbor sitting next to you may not be ready. They may have doubt. Uh, church, I wouldn't leave this building today. Uh, there's not a barbecue sandwich over there that's more important than making sure that I got enough oil to make it to heaven today. Uh, we got to make it to heaven. It could be your child that's not ready. It could be your parent that's not ready. Five had all. Five had none. Five had an experience. Five had none. Five depended on yesterday's blessing and five had all. Five was ready and five only went in. Oh, how would it, uh, how, just think about it. How, how we become today experts of fooling everybody around us. And not only do we fool everybody around us, but we fool ourselves. We tell ourselves, you're not a bad guy. You're not a bad woman. You're, you're, just, you're just like an average person. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be two in the field when Jesus comes back. One's going to be gone and one's going to be left. God looks not at the outward appearance today, but he's looking on the inside. He looks at the heart. And guess what he sees? He sees all or he sees no all. He sees the Holy Ghost or he sees no Holy Ghost. There needs to be an open I believe a, a, a open time that we come in and update our experience with God. We cannot inherit the experience. You can't inherit children, hunt boys. You can't inherit your experience with God. 
You cannot inherit it. You gotta, you gotta reach for yourself. We can't, we can't inherit this spirit. We, we need to get involved. Uh, we need the oil to make it happen. Uh, we gotta have it. I'm gonna tell you a little story before I get ready to close today, but a bachelor moved in to his new complex and he was having trouble making some coffee one day and he had a little older lady that lived next door to him. He says, he said, ma'am, I, I'm having a problem making coffee. Would you please come and help me and show me how to make coffee? And she did and he enjoyed his cup of coffee and, and about two or three days later she says, hey, how's the coffee? How's the coffee days going? He said, well, he says, it's kind of funny you ask. He said, the first day went real good. But after that, the coffee just started getting worse and worse and worse. And then she said, well, I don't understand. Why would that be? He says, well, let me ask you, how, many, how often are you supposed to change out the coffee grounds? He said, because I noticed the coffee was getting staler and staler and weaker and weaker. He didn't realize uh, church is the same way in our spiritual life. Uh, we got to keep those spiritual coffee grounds changed out to have a fresh anointing of God in our lives. Because if you don't, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get stale. You're going to be black and weakened and weaker and weaker. You're going to start out great and you're going to be just weaker and weaker. And, and guess what's going to happen? Eventually, everybody around you is going to see that you didn't change your coffee grounds out today. Today, if Jesus Christ has touched you, amen, in, a, in any kind of way, and you feel like you're ready to go. That's awesome. But I'm going to tell you if, you, if God has, if you're in his life and you're alive and you're ready today, when God is coming back, I believe, I believe today he is a God of second chance. Uh, I believe today he is a God that reaches when we just say, God, I need you. But church, there is coming a day that there's not going to be any more second chances. There's not going to be no more opportunities. I remember that was one of my first sermons, maybe the second or third sermon I ever preached was entitled Lost Opportunity. There is going to be lost opportunity for many people. But guess what? Those at CFPC, we don't have to leave lost today. We have an opportunity that we can receive God today. Another thing today, if we knew this was our last Sunday, let me ask you, I, I believe we would be some uh, forgiving one another like never before. We wouldn't have any enemies we wouldn't have anybody that we didn't like. We wouldn't have anybody that was just drove us crazy and we didn't want to be around. But I believe we would have all of our accounts up to date. Uh, we would love one another. I'm going to tell you, are you going to find out, uh, and you will find out in life's time, that, that if you don't follow through uh, uh, as a Christian, most of the time uh, you'll become bitter and bitter and bitter. But you got to follow through and ask people, forgive me for my shortcomings. This is the hardest thing I believe a Christian can do in his or her life is to go to somebody and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. We don't want to admit that. We don't, well, no. I don't know why everybody in the world does me wrong. Everybody done me this way. But church is a man or a woman steps up and says, you know what? I was wrong. Will you forgive me? If we knew today was our last Sunday, I believe we'd make things right. I believe we would. People would, would be all around doing better if we did what God does and, and forgive people like God forgives us. It would be much better. There would be some contacts made today. If we knew this was the last Sunday, everybody's phone would be going crazy. Everybody would be texting, I'm sorry, forgive me. I want you to meet me. Let's get things right because you know what? Uh, we got to realize it could be the last Sunday. Jesus is coming and we need to get things taken care of. Why is day? Amen. Because night's coming. God forgave every sin that you ever committed and that's awesome. But he also wants us to forgive everybody that we've ever done wrong as well or, or maybe done us wrong and when our neighbors trespass us do that and last today finally number three is this if you knew jesus was coming today this was your last sunday i believe you would you would put off things or you would not put off things that was eternal value there's eternal value things that's happening nothing would be more important than being in the house of god if you knew for sure this is it, you know what we live? We live like we got a next Sunday. Next Sunday is going to be a great Sunday around here. We're going to shoot our vision for CFPC for the year. We're going to uh, have a great time going around here. But you know, and I, I've got a lot planned for next Sunday. I've got banners going to be hanging over this building. We're going to see great things. We're going to have a move of God. But church, this may be it right now. We may not see 2015, January the 4th, but I come to tell you tonight, this could be it today. This could be it. Does anybody believe me today? This could be it. But we live like it may not be. 
But let me mention a few of the eternal values today. I believe you would put off, you wouldn't put off biblical tithing for sure. When we took up our offering a while ago, because, you know, if you go back and read it, I'm not preaching that today, but that's one of the things that you wouldn't put off. You'd want to give everything you had to God before it's too late. Because, you see, Malachi says if we don't give our tithing, we are, we're robbing God. That's what he says. Amen. Is, am I right? Am I still right? Am I still in the book, right? Malachi. It says we rob God. So you know what? You wouldn't want to hear God say, you robbed me when you was on the earth. So if you knew today this was it, this is your last day, you would pay 100% plus tithes. If Jesus was coming today, I believe we would want to be baptized. Nothing else. We would say, I just want to make sure my life's right, Brother Hunt. I backslid away from God a little while. I want to make sure things are right. I baptized some of you here in this building because you just want to make sure it's right. You've been baptized before. You, you've done, as a matter of fact, when I was a kid, I got baptized at, at 12 years old. But after I become an adult in my years of life, I felt led and my wife felt led. We just want to make sure things are right. Brother Creasy was having a baptism one night. We didn't have a change of clothes, but we just knew this was it. This is the day we needed to do it. And guess what we did? We got in the water and we were baptized in Jesus' name. Because we want to know. If we knew this was the last Sunday, I believe we all would jump in the water. Just want to know that it's right. You would want to see your friends and your neighbors and your family members and all those that, you know, that, that Jesus has been birthed into this kingdom. You'd want to know and make sure that they was, they was right in this last hour. You, you, would, you would do your best to get them in church before this day was over. Because you would want them to know, hey, God's fixing to come back. This is what we would be. We would be so enthused about witnessing. I believe if you knew God was coming back, this was going to be the last Sunday. All the hidden sins, the sins of, that nobody knows about, uh, all them sins that's hid up in the attic, all them sins that hid away because nowadays you can block sins. You know, you can block sin today with simply just one password. Passwords. And we think it's all blocked. But friend, I'm here to tell you, you can't, you can't block them from Jesus. There's no password that'll block it from Jesus. What would you do today if this was your last Sunday? The Bible says midnight, the cry came. Five virgins were ready and five were not. It's about midnight, church. It's about midnight. It's getting dark. What hour is it? I believe it's the last hour. I believe it's, it's somewhere between 11 and 12. I preached a message one time entitled 1159. And I preached it in 11 minutes and 59 seconds. And when that 59 second went off, that was it. I quit preaching. I said, this could be it right now. It's midnight to almost church. People are afraid that of what could take place of the world today. They're worried about the stock market falling. I'm not going to have retirement when I get to be 65. I'm 43 today, in case anybody wants to know. I was told the other night, man, I thought you was older than what you were. So I know I look old. I just had a hard life. But, but I'm 43 today. Is that right, Sister Hunt? I turned 43. I just, just had a birthday. I'm making sure that's right. But the thing is, I may not have a retirement. But I very, very rarely have I ever mentioned that because it's going to be what it's going to be. If God allows us, I don't think I'll be here to see 65. I'm going to be honest with you. I think, I think I'll be gone in a rapture. Some of you may still be here, but I'm planning on being gone. Amen. But the thing is this, is we all are concerned of, and any of you ought to be concerned, because that is our livelihood. That's how we're going to survive. I need my retirement, my 401k. I got to make sure everything's in place. I got to have life insurance. I got to make sure my wife got things left, you know, everything's in stock and everything's taken care of. But church, have we really just thought and thought about our spiritual life? Some of us is more worried about our stuff than we are our oil. If we're not careful, we'll get conformed to the world. Because some of us is conformed to our livelihood. We're conformed to, and, and what we're doing, we're walking around. We got the church part down. But we don't have the inside down. Why do you think we're not moving over to Iraq? And I think really they should have went a long time ago, winter and stopped these games of video games they're playing over there and, and just bomb that place got it over with and let's come back home let's get things right why do you think they're not but you know why it's because there's a huge oil deposit that they don't want to destroy over there it's talking about natural you know stuff that's going to do our lives good just this this thing here that you know we call uh uh life we, we like that you know 
You know why? Because the world needs the oil. The Bible says in the last day they shall suck the treasure out of the sands and out of the seas. Where do you get oil from? Out of the seas, out of the sands. That's where they get the greatest deposits is up under these seas and these, these sand areas. So what is happening today? The world is getting ready to be no more. It's going to be a last Sunday here soon. It'll be the greatest, I believe, this last Sunday that has happened. I believe it's going to be the greatest kidnapping story that's ever been told. Millions of people will start disappearing. Planes will start crashing. Cars will just start driving by themselves across the highway. Sometimes you feel like they are now. But, but they will be truly one day. It will be a day of the greatest disaster to all the non-believers. And, and I'm excited today for all the visitors. We have almost 30-something visitors here today. And we probably have... Let's give our all visitors a hand. So glad to have them. Probably have about 10 or 15 home with the flu today. And, and, and I was really pushing. I, I didn't want nobody to be sick today. But, it, and, you know, you speak words. Sometimes the devil jumps on. I'm excited for all of our visitors today. I really am. But I think the biggest... The greatest attendance service we'll ever have at this church is the day after rapture. But I want to tell you, I won't be here if you come. I'm planning on being gone. You know why? Because people are going to come. and They're going to look and they're going to want to get things right. But by then, it's too late because the door has been shut. Some of you have opened your heart today and you, you've given it to Christ and, and someday you'll walk through the door because you want to go before it's not. Uh, but somebody's going to leave this place today and say, I've got another Sunday. I've got another Wednesday. I, I've got a, a home church. I can go there and give my life to God. Friend, I'm here to tell you, you are in the kingdom of God today. We have buildings we set aside and we call this our home and that our home. But church, I'm here to tell you, this is just a building. But we're two or three are gathered together in his name. He said, I will be in the midst. Some of you today, you haven't opened your heart to Christ. But I want to tell you today, give your heart to God. Give your life to Jesus. Go down in the water in Jesus' name today. I always say this because I feel like I should. There's no other name given under heaven whereby you must be saved. Acts 4 and 12, write it down. You don't, you're not saved in any other name. You can't go in Buddha's name. You can't go down in Obama's name. You can't go down in Terry Hunt's name. You can't go down in Father's name. Son's name, Holy Ghost name. You've got to go down in Jesus' name to make it to heaven. There's only one way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except through me. You've got to go through. You know Peter caught that. Jesus sitting there, Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter looks at him and says, Thou art the Son of the living God. You are him? Peter didn't reckon. He said, well, you know what? I'm going to just do something. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Peter stood up in the book of Acts with the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And he held them up. He says, you've got to repent. You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. Receive the Holy Ghost to make it to heaven. I'm going to close right now. Would you stand with me today? The last Sunday is what I'm preaching today. I wonder how much differences we would have in views of the scripture if uh, we knew right now when we walk out of this building, when those doors open today, that's it for me. I'm going on to be with Jesus. I don't think we would argue too much, would we? About who we are, what time it is, and why it's already time to get out and i got things to do. You know what? Everything would change. Church, I'm going to encourage you. 14 is over almost. Just another day or a few here in four or five days here left this year. But the thing we got to remember is what am I going to do for the rest of my life after this day, if God allows it? I want us to bow our heads with every eye closed today, if I could. I want to pray with you, but I want to ask you why your eyes are closed. What if you knew today was your last Sunday? What would you be doing right now? What would your time frame be for God right now? Lord, I thank you for those that's under the sign of my voice today. God, I preach my heart. Lord, I want people to understand that we got to have oil in our lamps because it's going to happen just like you wrote the parable in Matthew chapter 25. And God, you said that if we're not ready and our, oils, our lamps are not full of oil, we're going to be left behind. 
God, we want to be, uh, we want to look to part, we want to act apart, we want to have fellowship with one another, and we're going to have a great day here in a little while. But Lord, right now, I pray that you would move across this building. Hallelujah. Lord, I just see you right now in the spirit with your, your oil cup ready to turn it up to somebody's life. And I pray right now that you administer across this building. And Lord, as we open this altar, I pray that there might be one, just one, one person that would step out and say, I want to make sure my lamp is full of oil. Lord, I pray that when they come to this altar, when they hit their knees in this altar today, or if they come and stand around this altar, however they do it, Lord, I pray as soon as they step here, God, you feel them full of your oil today. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray as they begin to move out of the pew, come on, these altars are open. Is there one want to come and say, I want my oil, my, my lamp full of oil today? Come on, friend. Don't wait. It's coming a day that we're not going to be able to do this anymore. Would you come? Come on, visitors, you're welcome. All visitors, you're welcome to come and pray. We're, we're all home folk together. Come and pray with us, would you? Come on, let's just find a place. God, I just want things right. Lord, I need things in my life. Just, I just need to update some things. I need to know I'm right where I need to be at. Lord, in the name of Jesus, come on, let's pray together. Find your place. Come on, that's it. Come on, find your place and pray. God, I want it. Oh, Jesus.